So I've just spent the past 15 hours road tripping by myself to a remote pocket of land deep in the Australian outback. I've left my car, bought three items with me and have just walked a few kilometers into the bush which is where I'm gonna stay for the next 72 hours. It's shaping up to be a pretty wild adventure. Here's what we got planned. So I'm currently in the most dangerous place here in Australia, the outback. And why I say this is because if there was one place that I would hate to get stranded and have to survive, it's out here because it's a very tough environment. 40 degree days out here, not much food, not much water, and houses some of the deadliest animals here in Australia. Matter of fact, about 12 months ago, we found the most venomous snake in the world, not too far from this location, the inland Taipan. Hopefully we'll be able to track down another one on this trip. But for the next three days, I've challenged myself to survive out here, catch my own food, collect my own water, and yeah, live out here with some of the deadliest animals on earth. Just walking through all these rocky escarpments, so many animal bones, only the tough animals survive out here. You kind of hope that they died of natural causes, but it also could be things like dingoes, which I have had run-ins with wild dogs in the past and it's no fun when you're out by yourself in the bush and you have wild dogs trying to attack you. That's why we're gonna make the fire out the front of our cave tonight to hopefully scare off any of those animals. But why did I choose this area in the outback out of everywhere there is out here to survive for the next three days? And it's because there's so many different terrains within this one little area. So where I am right now is the big rocky escarpments which hold a lot of the animals and which is where I'm gonna be camping tonight. Down that way, there's a little river. It's really dry at the moment, but there's still a few billabongs. That's where I'm gonna be almost constantly collecting water from and boiling it up here throughout the day. Then if we go over to the other side, a few hundred meters over there, it turns into red sand desert, big red sand dunes, which is where we're gonna go camp one of the nights. Then the last part that I'm really excited about is the area that these inland taipans live in. And it's the big grass fields, which I think are just over that way. I haven't actually gone around there yet. There's a bunch of cracks in the floor and these inland taipans live underground, feeding off the long-haired rats. It's pretty much all that they live on. But yeah, the main reason I chose that place is because of that river. You're not surviving in the outback without water. Have a go at this right here. Cave that goes down into the floor. We'll jump in it. Oh. Take a look at that little python. This might even be a good place to sleep tonight. Love coming out to the outback because there's just so many animals out here. And take a look at this little fella taking cover up in this cave. We just got this challenge started three days out here and this is the first animal that we've found. Obviously not the inland taipan like we're looking for. But this is just a little python. This would be his home up here in the cave. What he'd be doing is even though it's eight o'clock in the morning, it's 36 degrees outside. So he's just up here chilling, might even be going for a hunt during the day. Primarily a nocturnal species. They'll come out after dark and they'll even live in the same places in the cracks in the ground that the inland taipans live in. Now I was actually gonna sleep in this cave tonight, but looks like it's his home, eh? We'll note this one, maybe come back here later if we can't find a better place. The only problem about camping in these caves is this right here. This rock on the floor here was once up there on the roof. So don't want something like that falling on your head as you're sleeping. And if I'm looking around, they're everywhere. <laughs> That's all right. In these rocky escarpments is also home to the biggest lizard in Australia, the Parenti. The thing is massive and if it found this python right here, I think it'd be lunch mate. So. I'd be careful because they're definitely out here and hopefully we'll be able to track one down during this trip. One thing I will say is if you were actually trapped in a place like the outback or the desert, it wouldn't be as fun as it seems in these videos. I'm walking around expending so much energy when really you'd be finding a place like this that has a steady source of water and maybe food and you'd be waiting for someone to find you, waiting for a plane to fly over, making a smoke signal you wouldn't be using all of your energy. Because trust me, in a place like the Outback, your energy is drained real quick because of how hot it is. But yeah, you're really cool, mate. I'm gonna squeeze past you. Hopefully you get a feed tonight. After being a little movie star, mate. <laughs> 
All right, see you later. Oh, you coming over? See, just as I finish filming, he's like, all right, I can go now. See you, dude. Where's he going? Yeah, that's the right idea. All the animals that live out here at the moment have the right idea, eh? All of these kangaroos and emus that I'm seeing while I'm walking around are all sitting in the shade. It's just way too hot for them. With limited water out here, most of these animals are getting most of their water from the leaves that they're actually eating. But when really big droughts come along, that's when you can see mass animals dying. Lots of kangaroos that just can't survive the heat. So yeah, as I'm up on this big rocky escarpment, there's kangaroos jumping around everywhere. Literally before I came down and sat in this cave right here, there was a kangaroo sitting in it. So sorry about that, mate. <laughs> Go find another tree. Have a look at this place up here. I reckon this could be camp for the night. Let's check out inside this cave. Wow. Are you kidding me? Take a look at that. All right, I'm definitely camping in here tonight. That is awesome. I've just found the best cave to sleep in tonight. Probably to sleep in for the next couple nights that we're out here. And it's overlooking this huge rocky plain. Over that way is where the inland taipans will be. And when it gets dark, that's where we'll head, try to find some snakes. But yeah, this is really amazing. I feel so blessed that I can camp up here tonight. Looking at all the different colored rocks in this cave right here, it's so cool. Let's go to the other side and see what's up under there. I reckon I'm gonna be sleeping around this area somewhere. We'll have a fire going at the front. But yeah, what's back up this way? <laughs> Take a look at this place. All right, so I only bought a few things with me on this survival video. The first is a knife. And it's got a little fire starter on it as well. Obviously for protection out here against wild animals like wild dogs. But also we're going to be using this fire starter to light fires and boil up water. So yeah, we've bought a little pot out here as well to boil up water. And maybe even crayfish if I end up catching them later. Then I also bought a pair of binoculars. Because these inland taipans should be just down that way. Hopefully I'll be able to spot them from up here. We'll see how far they go. And if we see one, we're running straight down there to film it. And finally, we got a torch. Because we're gonna be going for a night walk later on, a lot of other species come out at night. We're gonna be going out to try and find them throughout the next three days that we're staying here. So yeah, that's it. Besides all my camera gear, I got a drone to get some good footage. But yeah, we're gonna be living out here for three days with these few items right here. Let's get into it. Take a look at the terrain. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but over there, there's a massive whirlwind of sand and everything picking up. I really hope it comes over here because I'm definitely gonna run straight into it. Whew. 
See the big dust cloud? When you're in a survival situation, you want to conserve energy by chasing as many dust clouds as you can. It's like a tornado of dust. It's so far away, I just chased it for like a kilometer and it kept going that way. Now it's a cool environment, but you're not going to find the inland taipans here. But if you take a look at this huge field over the other side, that's where these snakes will be. At the moment, they'd be six feet under. I don't actually know how deep the burrows go that they live in, but they'd be under the ground in the cracks. I'm walking around here through these sand dunes and I'm not seeing any animals. You'd think that there's none here because it's such a harsh environment. But if you look in the sand, there's tracks from bilbies, small marsupials, goannas, snakes, all through this area. So they would be living in here somewhere. A lot of the marsupials would be in burrows under the ground, getting away from the heat, and they'd come out after dark. <sighs> Ready? Look how many flies are on my back. Crazy, so many of them out here. Just trying to get any kind of moisture they can. My eyes and mouth. First time I came out to the outback, it was pretty annoying, but you get used to it after a while. You end up just forgetting that they're there, even when there's that many on your back. So the plan right now is I've walked away from that really dry desert area down to the only water source that's around me right here and it's completely dry. There's only really small pools that remain out here. Luckily for me, there's one that's not too dirty that I think will be okay after I boil the water in that pot that I bought out here. But this just down here is the little water source that I'm hopefully gonna be able to catch food out of. Now it doesn't look like much but there is a chance of there being freshwater crabs and maybe even some big red core crayfish living in here because you can see the whole system's dried up. So whatever was in here, if it's not buried in the mud, should be in this little pool. His little feel of things and his claw is just sticking out of the water. All right, so they're in here. See him? Right there. There we go. There is one little crayfish. All right. Oh, mud from this swamp all over my face. Thanks, mate. All right, we got something to eat. There we go. And that right there is gonna be my dinner. I had a bit more of a walk around. There was definitely one more yabby in there, but I think it buried down into its hole. Couldn't get it out here in the outback. This kind of heat, it really takes it out of you. It drains you so much, but it's cool. It's really cool being out here and surviving out here on this land, no matter how harsh it is. We're gonna go back to camp, go back to the cave, cook this fella up later on this afternoon. Now we'll make a little fire and cook up this water. That water looks great, doesn't it? Oh, perfect. Hopefully we don't get sick after drinking this water. I can imagine a water source like this out in a place where it's so hot is getting used by a lot of animals, wild pigs, kangaroos, emus, and where those animals go, there's a lot of disease. So boiling it should get rid of it, but we'll have to see.
try and get this fire going. There we go. I think we got it, mate. How good. As if it wasn't hot enough already. <laughs> now it'll be good to make a little fire and cook up this crayfish. Everything's so dry out here. Doesn't take much. A little bit of flint and steel. This is where we're staying tonight. Pretty magical, hey? I'd say it's been a pretty successful first day. We caught food, we found a place to camp, went exploring. We haven't found the target species yet, but I reckon maybe tonight or tomorrow morning, we're gonna find one. While this crayfish is cooking up, I'll get the binoculars out and have a look. There's a few emus down there, a mother and about six or eight babies just following her around. We'll get the drone up as the sun's going down, try to get some footage of her in that paddock where the inland taipans would be. A few kangaroos chilling. Although it's the afternoon at the moment, it's still about 38 degrees, so they'll be hanging under the trees for a bit longer. No snakes yet. We we'll chuck this pot on. Crazy thing about this inland taipan, right? is it's only eating an animal that's about that big, these long-haired rats that they primarily feed on. But because sometimes there's lots of droughts around this area and they need to kill that rat as quickly as possible, they've developed the most toxic venom drop for drop in the world. And number two in the big picture, the Eastern Brown, the second most venomous snake in the world, is not even close. So yeah, pretty amazing snake and the patterns on them are crazy. They're just real, real powerful animals. And the reason why I'm not nervous when I come out here to work with these snakes is because I'm not gonna take any risks. It'd be a silly thing to do when you're out here by yourself. So they're one of my favorite snakes. All right, big first day out in the outback. What I'm gonna do now, now that I got 4% more energy after eating that crayfish, is wait for it to get dark, get the drone up in the air, get some shots of the sunset, maybe go try find those emus that I saw before down there with the binoculars, and then go out looking for snakes. All right, sun's just setting. We've just made it out to the plains with a torch. And we're gonna be staying out here after dark, seeing if we can find any snakes cruising around. And yeah, this place right here, you can see the sun going down at the moment, is where these inland taipans are living. It's so crazy. We'll keep walking, wait for it to get dark. And yeah, see if we can find any.
pretty successful first day out here in the outback. We found some cool animals, found a place to sleep, did a lot of exploring. We didn't end up finding the inland taipan, but what I'm gonna do in part two of this series is head out early morning and try to track down one of those snakes. So you'll see that video next week. But yeah, thank you so much for watching part one of this Outback Survival video. So cool and I'm so blessed that I can come out here and experience this land and show you all. So yeah, I'll see you all next week for part two, where hopefully we track down the most venomous snake in the world. See you legends then.